There's a stock counter gear, which he has already taken the bearing off, and it's going on a new one that came with the Marlin Competition 470. And this one does not need to be pressed on, so he's just going to hammer it on. It's not really hard. That's the part we're using. This part set off to the side. The stock input that he's taking the bearing off of. Uh, sure, yeah, we're gonna... Same thing, just hammer it on or? We're gonna try. We need a little bit of lithium. Here. This is a weak point of the uh, stock input is that it only has something like 30% spline whereas the Marlin version is 100% spline so that inherently makes it much tougher. Yeah. You don't see the snapper in the groove? Okay, there you go. Now. Not so much a groove as a stain. Not so much a groove as a stain. That one might be a little it's different. We're going to give it a couple of whacks. We might have to actually put it in the press. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. I'll let you do it. Sounds right. That's how they preserve guns. Not easy ball. Alright, so this one's in better shape. We're gonna use this one. That one's not too bad, but that one is even better, so. Hammer, pipe, whatever. No. Press. We're going to press this one. Okay. Cool. Yeah, leave that at work. You should be able to press that on and get, get it squared up. I didn't get it totally squared up. So. Filming it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of this one. Install the snap ring. Okay. Well, things like that are big enough to access them. Then you put the bearing retainer on it. That's the square piece over there. Grab four of those bolts.
Yeah. No, I think it is. I think it is this one. See if you just all this one because we did that a few times earlier, so yeah. This one just goes straight in, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, first gotta line up to the to the gears. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. Alright, these are the gaskets that came with the gear kit uh, from Marlin. Um, but we're gonna use Ultra Gray instead, actually. Shift fork number two and hub. And then what we're going to do is we'll put a little grease for these bearings. A little more on that one. Cause yeah. what we'll do is we'll take this case section. Yeah. And we'll set that down on here. Tighten down those two by hand. The front output shaft goes in next. I wipe a little lithium around the bearings; so it slides in there easier. There you go. I don't have a plastic hammer, so I'll support that case. More than good. This one looks the right size. Is that right size? Yeah. See if you stole it, man. Let me try your trick. God, how do you do that? Well, we gotta get one end started first. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. See there, it's not that bad. It's just a trick. That's right. There we go. Sweet. That's the little felt piece. You know that little felt piece in there? Gotcha. Nice and clean. That peanut butter. Looks like peanut butter. Car crest wheel bearing grease. So now we gotta drive this all the way through. We gotta be careful not to go too far. Yeah, we're gonna get this that little ridge there flush to the inside. Some flushing good already. That groove, this oil hole here. Okay. So I'm going to make sure they're lined up because I believe they're square. Low, high, and neutral. That's three notches. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive has two notches. It's easy not to mix them up. So this one right here is what prevents you from doing a low range and two wheel drive. This is what separates you from being able to do twin stick. See this can slide, so put this tiny punch in there to figure out that's where it needs to sit and put the pill in. And again, that's the thing for for the four wheel drive indicator light. Yeah. Ah, this is for the four wheel drive indicator light. Yeah, because there's a four wheel drive indicator switch there. If it has a notch, works the same thing as uh, same way as a backup light. Wow, I completely forgot we have one of those. What? A four wheel drive indicator thing. You forgot you have one of those? That was one of the first lights I pulled out of the dash. Oh. You want to install a roll pin? That way you can get that started and there you go. You hold that in place and come back here. So now we want to come you need to come all the way back, pull this back towards you, and then line up for the roll pin and install the roll pin. Yeah, my roll pin. Come 
Are you kidding me? I will admit, I think that's the most tools I've ever seen spent for installing one roll pin. <laughs> that was a bitch. The other that one was, was easy. I know. <laughs> Alright, now this one, the second fork, is the one we're about to do. Like that. Okay, then you put this in. Yeah, I do. Bada boom, look at that. Did drop right there. Then you put these uh, oiling tubes in here. When you're putting in these oil guides, there's a groove right here. You're going to point the little wing on the side right here into that groove. So like that. You do the same thing on that side too. Use that back on, be very careful. We install this, there's a ball to hold this in place. It's just an oil slinger. If we put this together, we're going to make sure we put the rear flange on, otherwise this can slide off. Alrighty. You got to make sure these oilers line up, right? Yep. Okay. okay. That definitely was not the most graceful ever. <laughs> yeah, it worked good for installing that. So you're going to put sealer in the splines? Gotcha. Red Loctite. All right, after the detent ball and spring. It's recording.
if you're getting a Loctite. That was Loctite, by the way, yeah. And then we'll just paint the nut over like we did on the rear side. Yep. You're done. Done. I just imagine we were just putting this thing here and ding, ding, ding.